Hey, what's up everyone? So what you are about to watch now is a profiling session that was done between me and Joyce Meng. And pretty much the reason why, if you haven't seen my profiling sessions before, um, the reason why I post these is so that we can continue to see more nuances, more examples of people of certain types. And it's kind of like a game, you know, y'all are able to then guess what type the person is before uh, the end of the session. This one was actually a little bit more straightforward. Um, a lot of sessions take a lot longer. And usually when I'm doing sessions with Joyce, like Joyce has her own um, profiling session thing too. Usually when I'm doing it with her, then they're usually like kept down to like maybe like an hour or so. Um, so it's more of like a little bit of a truncated session, but you still are able to get like, usually you're able to get like, you know, the best fit type. Uh, so throughout this session, what you should be doing is watching, trying to like see and guess like what type the uh, Camilla's personality type is. Um, and then on top of that, just try to understand like more of like how these types like show up and just overall like what these types can be sometimes be mistaken for, some biases that you might have about this type, etc. Because even though Camilla is of this type, everybody is different, even people of the same type. So, all that being said, enjoy. And if you are trying to also get profiled or have any sessions for yourself, be sure to check out denzelmensa.com. You can check out all of my services for coaching and for profiling. So yeah, without further ado, here's Camilla. And so, Camilla, I am curious. If you could let us know some background info on you, such as your age, the kind of industry you work at, and the culture you grew up in, and where you live now to give us context for type development. Sure, yeah, uh, I'm 25, turning 26 this year. I work in um, talent and development. So I am basically an acting coach. I work with working actors. Um, preparing for different roles. I also do like private vocal lessons. Um, my husband's a filmmaker, so we make films together and things like that. Um, I've done some writing, done some directing, um, done a little bit of producing, but that's kind of the field that I'm in. Um, and I grew up, um, I'm Hispanic. My family's from Honduras. Uh, so we're a really kind of tight-knit, loud, close family. Um, right now I live in the metro Atlanta area. Mm. So um, that's where I am in kind of that hub. Mm. Very cool, very cool. Um, and so I'm curious, what do you love to do so much? And I mean, you love to do this so much. You could do this indefinitely until you're exhausted because it gives you energy. Um, I really love interacting and working with my students. I think that that I like literally leave work with like a high, a rush of energy. Um, I just came back from work and I am, you know, really revved up and hyped up. I also um, really like to do anything physical. I love dancing. I love working out. I love uh, just kind of walking. Um, so really keeping busy and doing things like that is what um, energizes me. Mm, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. And so I'm curious, Camilla, what are some adjectives you would use to describe yourself, even if other people may not agree? Uh, I consider myself a real go getter. Um, very stubborn, definitely. Um, once I set my sights on something, I'm kind of locked in. Um, I would consider myself bold, outgoing, um, creative. Um, a little bit sensitive as well. Um, but yeah, that's how I would describe myself. Mm, makes sense, makes sense. And so I am curious, what words are the antithesis to you that do not sound like you in your view? I guess a big one for me would be like lazy or unmotivated. Um, other words, maybe cold. Um, I would say that I'm not um, very cerebral in a way. Um, I don't consider myself that kind of person. Mm, makes sense. And how do other people in your life describe you, their perceived strengths and weaknesses of you, even if you don't agree? It definitely varies. I think that the people closest to me would 
agree that I can be very bold and outgoing. I think people who don't know me as well would see me as more reserved, um, just depending on what kind of relationship we have. Um, I would say most people in my life would agree that I'm stubborn. Um, I've been told, particularly by my parents and a couple of other people that I am, that I take criticism like to heart too much um, or that I'm too sensitive. Um, I've also been told that I don't, uh, like I, I spring into action, but I don't necessarily like think things through all the way. So I'm a little bit like impatient at times. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, a go-getter spring into action, definitely. Like that, that really does get you really far in life, so. And so Camilla, I'm wondering, what is your experience of your own emotions? Um, well, you know, with my background, like I went to drama school, it was very focused on kind of like the physical feeling of emotions and, and how emotions feel in your body. Um, I think that I was kind of always told that it wasn't good to be emotional or that I was like overreacting to things. So um, for a period of time, I felt like I really took that to heart and kind of tried to suppress emotionally what I was feeling or um, channel it more into my acting and into my art. Um, so I think even to this day, I tend to have kind of like a hair trigger for emotions. Like I, you know, will get very frustrated and just start crying or um, something will go wrong and I'll just be like really angry and then I kind of simmer down quickly. So it's, um, I think that kind of path has given me a little bit of a rocky sort of feel of my emotions. Like I, I'm in tune with them kind of in theory, but in the moment, it's very hard for me to kind of reel them back. Mm hmm. Yeah, it takes energy to reel them back. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. And so I'm curious, what is your relationship with other people's emotions? Um, well, with other people's emotions, I, I don't know that I think about them all that much. Um, when people are emotional in front of me, I think that I'm used to seeing it more. I have a very emotional, like, like, well, my mother is very emotional and, um, you know, being in a creative field where people express emotion very often, I'm sort of used to seeing it, I think. If it's very spontaneous, it might catch me off guard, but depending on the situation, I can uh, handle it pretty well and help the person feel better or offer advice or whatever they need. Makes sense. And so, Camilla, how were you like as a kid? I was very outgoing as a kid, very talkative, very uh, social. I was, um, I, even as a kid, I was a performer. I mean, I. I, like there are videos of me just like singing and dancing and entertaining people and, and having a good time. I was um, reprimanded a lot for being too talkative. And uh, I think that as a, as a teenager, that really reels back and dials back. But as a young kid, I was very over the top. Mm, makes sense, makes sense. I think that that's perfect with your career choice. I feel like it allows you to express that creative energy. And so, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, you have a really great creative and pretty outfit. Like just Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so I am curious, what is something that's obvious to you, but it's not as obvious to other people? What do you mean? Like about... Like, um, what do you notice that you get first or seamlessly or naturally that you notice other people struggle with i'll give an example like your go-getter you really like quickly act and you notice other people actually struggle to act or they're slower or they got it like yeah that. i think that actually would be what i notice um i i you know deal with a lot of people in my life who are like i'll just do it later and and the you know inside i'm just like why not do it right now right like why not just finish it, get it over with, get it done. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. And so what is something, something else as well? I'm trying to squeeze the lemon. <laughs> yeah, um, 
Well, I think that for me, I've always had kind of like a clear idea of where I want my life to go or what who I want to be, I guess. Um, even from when I was little, I mean, I, I set my sights on it. Like when we moved, I checked which high schools had the best theater programs and like looked into colleges and like different things like that. Like I was very sure about what I wanted to pursue. And so I think you know, even if I didn't have the proper words for it, I had like a clear vision for what I wanted for myself. Um, and I noticed that like other people kind of maybe struggle to see themselves in five years or where they want to be or where they're going. Um, so that's always been something that for me was very true. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. And so what are some things that are not as obvious to you that you mm -hmm. notice other people get faster or are better at? Um, I don't know if this is like an exact thing, but I feel like I'm not very good at thinking. I, that's like a very weird way to word that. But I feel like if I spend too much time in my head kind of mulling over things, it, I feel like I'm just spinning my gears and getting nowhere. Um, I think that's part of the reason why I like to just do things. But um, the more time I kind of like mull things over in my head, I feel like they just deteriorate. Um, whereas I feel like there are people who can really like refine and fine tune an idea and a concept like, you know, for such a long time and come up with something fantastic. Um, you know, I'm not like, I, I have like good ideas, but I'm not necessarily the ideas person. Mm. Makes sense. And so I am curious, are you an organized person? Would you consider yourself to be what other people consider you to be? I think I've become one. Um, and I think other people would, would say that I've become one. When I was mm -hmm. younger, it was much harder for me to stay organized. I would forget to turn in assignments. I would lose things. Um, and even now, it's kind of like a like a system with, you know, the different calendars and making sure I leave on time and um, keeping all of my stuff together. But um, I think that I've become a much more organized person kind of out of necessity. Makes sense. Yeah. And if there was no sense of necessity, do you prefer to take each day as it comes and be spontaneous and feel like see what you feel like doing that day? or plan out your day and have an idea of what to expect? I think that if, you know, without the need of necessity, I like having kind of maybe like a loose plan, but I don't like to be like scheduled down to the minute or I'm also open to the, the plan changing um, and just kind of seeing what comes up. I mean, I, I teach acting classes and I very famously don't lesson plan. So I think that that's, kind of goes into that. I like to just kind of adapt. Um, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. I will hand over the baton to Denzel. Wow. So um, we're not even 12 minutes deep. And uh, <laughs> you're very concise. Very yeah. surprised if me and Thank Joyce you. are on two different uh, types right now. You seem to be, <laughs> you seem to be very evidently presenting as like one type, um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to like probe past that and see like if maybe uh, it's wrong. So with all that being said, how would you say or what role would you say that you play in um, topics having to do like with with pretty much like abstract conversations? Um, I think that I can kind of play along, but they don't particularly interest me. Yeah, why would you say that? Because um, it's sort of, it's fun in theory, but I don't, I don't love diving into it just for the sake of diving into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I were to try to discuss right now, like the topic of what happens after you die and like do humans have souls and all of that 
how long do you think that you would be able to indulge in that conversation with me? Probably not more than a few minutes. Um, <laughs> I think that I would just kind of dive into, well, this is what, you know, I've learned or what I've heard. I don't know if it's right. I don't know if it's wrong, but mm -hmm. that would probably be the end of the conversation. Got you. And that would be due to disinterest or due to just lack of not really knowing much more or both or kind of a mix of both um mm -hmm. i mean it does interest me but it's you know with, with it being something that there's not a definitive answer to i think that i don't love to think about things like that too hard um because again it just kind of gets my wheels spinning and going nowhere yeah definitely makes sense um how would you say that your relationship with your body is like do you trust it like is it like are you usually like aware of your surroundings are you like off in your head in some way like how is that like i think when i'm at my best i'm very present in my body um i've definitely i mean i've gone through some like kind of more traumatic issues in like the past couple of years and i think that that kind of caused me to go more in my head mm -hmm. um, and maybe be less aware, um, less cohesive with my body. Um, mm -hmm. But when I'm at my best and I'm really feeling good, doing well, I feel like I'm very present in my day to day. Makes sense. OK, cool. <laughs> if you were to put in order the, um, the, the following three, what would you say take up the most space in your mind? Future, past, present. Like I would, least. sorry. That's all right. Um, I would probably say present first, then future, and then past. All right. And why would you put it that way? Um, well, I do think about the future. I have like a defined kind of idea of where I want to go, who I want to be. Um, but I think my brain is more preoccupied with kind of what's happening here and now and kind of getting through that for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and I do feel like it's kind of it kind of all leads to the future and, mm -hmm. and it's building and it's prepping for the future. But um, that's just kind of the hierarchy in my eyes. And then I don't really like to think about the past very much. Um, I have definitely gone through things that have shaped me and have taught me, but I, one, I don't really have a great memory for the past. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be so many times I'll be talking to somebody be like, you remember when we did this and went here? I'll be like, no, I, <laughs> I really don't. Um, <laughs> so I think that that one definitely for sure is the last. Makes sense. Okay, cool. Would other people consider you to be bossy? Like maybe even your teaching style in ways or no, not really. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Like what makes you think that they would? Yeah, um, I think that I've kind of got a better handle on kind of seasoning it with salt a little bit more and, and making it more appealing. Um, I was definitely a really bossy kid. Mm. Um, you know, if we were, you know, if we were playing the game, I was the leader of the game. If we were doing a school project, I was the leader of the school project. If we were doing a play, I was the leader of the play. It doesn't matter what my role was, I was the leader. Um, even in my relationship, you know, with my husband, I think, you know, he likes this about me because he's kind of the opposite in this way, but I'm very like, here's what we're doing. We're getting this done. We're doing this today. And, um, and I definitely feel like in my teaching style, I, you know, I, I watch them do their acting and I nitpick. I'm like, here, fix this, fix this, do this differently. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it goes along. Um, like I said, I've gotten better at kind of making it more appealing, but yeah. it's definitely there. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Now that makes sense. That That's really helpful. Um, what would you say is something that still surprises you about people? Something that surprises me about people, I think, um, 
I've definitely, at least in my work field, seen a lot of people kind of self-sabotage before they even get anywhere. Mm. Um, because they can't, you know, they don't necessarily have the humility or the self-awareness to say, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the room or mm. I don't know how this works. Um, or, you know, not even being able to do, you know, what they're being asked of. And mm -hmm. so I think that to me, that's something that is just kind of shocking because in my eyes, if there's something that I know is going to help me, mm -hmm. I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to do that. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I just see that constantly in yeah. my particular field of work. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, wow. Okay, cool. Would you say that with the understanding that um, everybody is an individual and we're all unique in our own ways, would you say that you are like most people or would you say that like, no, even though everybody's unique in their own ways, like I'm really different. Like I do not really fit in with most people. I think that at my yeah. core, I'm a lot like others. Um, I think that I have certain qualities that make me stand out a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think that fundamentally at our core, we're all very similar, much more similar than I think that we think. Got you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, just processing everything. So I make sure I don't ask redundant questions. Sure. Um, and while you do that, I will ask a question. So when you dress, do you keep in mind, oh, I want to dress for this social group or this is how other people feel about how I dress, so I'll dress like this? Or do you tend to dress for yourself and how you feel that day? I actually tend to dress very much in, in terms of like the, the situation and kind of what I want to impress on the situation. Um, and that's something that's kind of always been very true of me. Um, when I was first kind of getting started in my field of work, I dressed much more like kind of drier, more professional, because I was very young. Um, I was 22 or 23 when I first started coaching. And so I really wanted to be taken seriously. Um, and now, you know, that I've been working at the same place for a couple of years, people know me, I have a rapport. It's a little louder. It's a little bit more fun. It's a little bit um, you know, more personality based. Um, but when I, you know, I even remember being as young as like when I was in high school and I, I moved high schools halfway through my experience and I really wanted to fit in. So I was like, well, I'm going to dress really friendly, really sweet, really approachable. So that way people will just want to be my friend and talk to me. Um, so in a way, clothing has always kind of been like a tool or it's always been contributing to what I'm doing. Makes sense, makes sense. And so I am curious, are you more in tune with your own emotions or other people's emotions? I'd probably say my own. I think I'm more in tune with my own. I don't think I'm oblivious to other people's emotions. Um, but I think that in like, I just think about emotions in terms of my own first. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. And Denzel, you look like you've done processing. Yeah. So how would you say that you approach your relationships in life, like friendships and uh, just, yeah, any connections in your life? Like, how would you say that you view them? Well, I've had um, a couple of like really long term friends that I just um, I'm very protective of, very loyal of. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of like other relationships, like for like I, me and my husband, I would consider like we're like a team. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I view us. Like we're a very complimentary team. Um, he's, you know, I'm the action person. He's the ideas person. I'm like a, the scheduler. He's the you know, the person who does, you know, it's just, we're very complimentary. Um, yeah. So I view us as like a, a team or a unit. And then with my friends, I really, um, I really want to see them succeed. I want to see them do well. I want to see them happy. Um, 
And I almost in a way see myself as kind of like a protector of them. Like I'm very protective over them, very loyal to them. Um, Similarly in my, now in my workplace, uh, it's a little bit different. I definitely, you know, I don't want to say that I view like my coworkers as competition because it's not that serious, but Mm -hmm. there's a little bit more of that edge of hierarchy. Um, And I do have like a, good sense of like loyalty to my job but more importantly like um I want to be like the best at what I do so I definitely have you know I view their like vision of me or how they see me as different from like my friends or um my husband or even my family so um it it just kind of depends Yeah, yeah most definitely most definitely would you say that you're the type of person who maybe say like your top three to five closest friends, you speak to them like on a weekly basis, on like a daily basis, on a monthly basis? Are you like a up out of sight, out of mind type of person? But it's like, hey, when I see you, then we're good. Like, how would you say that you are with that type of consistency? I'd say that there is maybe only two or three that I talk to like super regularly. Everybody else that is my friend is just kind of like an out of sight, out of mind until, you know, we connect again or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm not, not to be like nosy or anything, but how long have you been married? Less than a year. Less than a year. Okay, cool. All right. And how would you say, or what would you say your your goal is like with your career right now? Like, I know that you said that it's not necessarily that you're competitive, but there is like a hierarchy that you're trying to get up in. And so I'm yeah. curious, like, what would you say, like my end goal in a perfect world and then in a realistic world, like if there's a difference, what would that be for you? Well, my uh, ultimate goal or my ultimate dream has always been to kind of like open up my own um, like acting studio or my own theater. Um, Mm. And I'm in a very unique place where I um, do a lot of work for an acting studio. I run their social media. I teach a lot of their classes. I I just I'm very involved. Yeah. Um, So I feel like I'm getting a lot of the great training that I need to ultimately accomplish that dream. and as, again, like I do, I don't necessarily view them as competition because we're not, there's no prize at the end, right? Yeah, but yeah. Um, I think that I almost can't help myself from like wanting to be the best at whatever I do. For and sure. so there's always that kind of like relationship there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I get that. Would you, uh, how would you describe like a, a day at work pretty much like and even just the things that you do at work in that way well i am uh when i am scheduled i come in and it's um it's really active and really fast um because i'm always doing either private like one-on-one sessions or classes and so it's very um i have a great rapport with all the students and so i'm you know i'm coming in and how are you and how have you been and let's get started and here's what we did last time, here's what we're working on. And it's, you know, they'll sing their song or they'll do their scene and I'll sit and I'll kind of watch for what, you know, I'm supposed to watch for and be like, okay, let's fix this, let's do this over, Um, you know, focus on your emotion, focus on what you're going for, what your goal is in the scene. Um, And um, we just kind of work through and flesh through and occasionally, you know, we'll um, do like a little mini lecture, very short, concise kind of like, here's what we're working on. Here's what we're learning about. Mm -hmm. Um, Also offering occasional like career advice or more specialized training. Or um, I also do audition tapes for people. So I'll tape them, I'll edit, um, send them this. But it's very fast paced. I get very like entrenched in it in the moment and then it's you know um to the point where i you know i forget to eat i forget to drink water i'm just like very yeah (laughs) i believe that how did you get into all of this like especially at such a what might seem like a young age like Mm -hmm. you know acquiring these types of skills and then having the confidence to be able to like push people into that arena and like are you trying to also be like an actress like, I mean, you are already an actress, but like, are you trying to be like one, like 
like in Netflix movies and like stuff like that? Or is it more like, no, I just really want to stick kind of like to coaching those who will end up and not be like, yeah, you know, you, you know, Michael B. Jordan, I was the one who coached him. Or like, where is that for you? Well, it's really interesting because I remember, I remember the moment where I was like, this is for me. Um, because I was in a music class in seventh or eighth grade. And we were watching, like, we were we were doing, like, a, a lesson on musical theater, right? And I was like, this is great. I like high school musical. I like musicals. <laughs> like, I can. And I remember seeing, like, we watched a documentary on, like, the making of West Side Story. And it was really the first time where I was like, whoa. Like, there are performers out there who look like me, who tell these stories that are important. And I was like, I have to do this some way, somehow. Yeah. I, but we didn't have a theater program in my middle school. So I begged my English teacher because we were reading a play. I was like, can we do this? Can we like, you know, if we figure out a way, can we do this? Like, even if it's just for class. Yeah. And she ended up saying yes. Um, she asked the principal wow. and we put it together kind of, you know, half heartedly, but not for me. Like I took it so seriously. I learned everybody's lines. I, <laughs> you know, like, this is what I want to do. Um, and it was great. And then I went to high it was school. was West Side Story, you said? No, we were reading like a, a very short, like kind of play for English class. Um, and we ended up putting it together. And then I went to high school and I was like, I'm going to do all like, you know, I was like, I'm going to do all of the plays. I'm going to do mm -hmm. all of the musicals. I'm going to keep auditioning. And and I really I took it so seriously just because I knew like this, this was where I wanted to be. Nice. Um, nice. I eventually moved over to the Atlanta area. I went to Georgia State University. Mm. Um, and, you know, I was like the kid in like the intro level, like class that everybody has to take. And I was just like taking notes and I was learning and I was so engaged and so involved. And, um, you know, I had really great rapport with all of my teachers. I tried to take advantage of kind of like any, um, opportunities that we had come along um and eventually when i left i um i was teaching dance but i was also working at a daycare mm. um and i was just like what am i gonna do where am i gonna work and i was just applying everywhere didn't really know 100 percent what i wanted and i saw this ad for like an acting coach job and i was like why not oh uh, apply for it and I interviewed there and I was like this is the place that I want to be right so mm. I completely just like latched on to it I was like give me every job you have every opportunity um like I will be here Monday through Friday all day long every day if you want me to so um and that's where I've been since I for the past almost two years that's where two I've been years I was literally about to ask how long you've been there that is mm -hmm. beautiful seriously that's really awesome what would you say your top three um, musicals are? Definitely West Side Story still. I this, figured that that would be number one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's. I mean, it's the moment that started everything. Yeah. Um, I really love Wicked is another mm. one that I just really love. And then In the Heights. Yes. That's beautiful. In the Heights is my number one favorite. So. It's it's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. Seriously, that's really awesome. Okay, man, I just <laughs> Joyce. It's like everything else would really just, as Antonia Dodge would say, be masturbation. Like <laughs> it's pretty clear <laughs> that like it's. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like what other things to ask. Yeah, and we don't have to, too. What we could do is we could share the type. And then, um, Camilla, there were certain things you might have wanted to discuss in relation to why you wanted to figure out your type, and we could right. discuss those topics, too. True. So, yeah. I yeah. think first I'll ask, um, how much do you already know about type? I've researched quite a bit. Um mm. Uh, about like cognitive functions and just kind of okay. trying to learn what they are. But I, I had a lot of trouble placing mine because hmm. uh, for, I mean, I'm just the kind of person that I'll read something and I'll be like, that sounds like me. And then I'll read something <laughs> and I'll be like, that sounds like me too. And there was just no like 
you know, no, no definitive. I was like, I can't really place where I am. And I, um, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. But I, I am familiar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's also a trait of your type as well, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and everything. <laughs> um, but I'll let Denzel share the honors, actually. Okay. Well, just for the fun of it. Um, so I, I've written down what type that me and Joyce believe that you are. And we like to keep track of like certain types and what they might think that they are, or, like confuse themselves for or whatever like that. So just for that, what type do you think that we're gonna say that you are based off of this session? I genuinely couldn't even say. I mean, I've gotten like drastically different answers when I've taken the test probably again, just cause I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, I've considered quite a few, but I, I really could not guess. Got it. Okay, cool. Well, me and Joyce have not really reconvened, but I'm pretty certain that if my NI powers are correct, we both think ESFP. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that it's, on the nose <laughs> like, like very clear yeah. very like nothing nothing even like a hair not even out of place esfp <laughs> and these are the reasons why so as you know um uh, with cognitive functions and everything the esfp leads with extroverted sensing as a dominant function um and this function is all about being in the moment being present seeing things clearly for what they are and jumping into action without a plan, but being able to improvise, improvise and figure that out. Um, and I think that you displayed a lot of that throughout this session. Like that's how you like spoke a lot about like, you know, even the fact that you like being in your body and like you saying like, you know, dancing and like you love to like work out and then just the acting, the performing, even when you were younger, your style, like all of that, like just comes with like, that superpower of being able to be present, being able to be in the moment. Um, you said that uh, the thing that comes very obvious to you is like, do it, why not do it right now? SE, extroverted sensing is all about do it now, don't put it off. Now, the opposite polarity function, NI, that function would be your inferior function as an ESFP. That is all about, first off, putting things off for later. Oh, that would be really cool to do in theory. Mm. Let me let me let me sit back and mull over that for about 10 years and then I'll take action. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you said the thing that you really are not good at is thinking and mm. you know like somebody might think, "Oh, you know, thinking function." So she's just not a thinker. But what you really meant was like conceptualizing, like really like taking mm -hmm. a lot of time to like let me really think through like the the future and all the implications, you're not gonna do all of that because your superpower is actually jumping into action and being able to improvise along the way. And the more that you think through all of these actions and all of that, then you're gonna get in your own head. The best thing that you can do instead is to get into your auxiliary function of introverted feeling. Introverted feeling or FI is pretty much the function that's all about getting really in tune with your emotions, really in tune with your values, all of that. And so with you, once you find out, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I feel in my heart. This is what lights me up. Then it's like, even if I don't know what the future holds, even though I can't, even though I'm not planning every single step for like the next five years, I know that as long as I'm literally following my heart and I'm literally doing what I'm supposed to be, like what I feel is right in me, then I'm going to continue to go the distance. I'm going to continue to, I don't have to plan out long-term because I'm going to be, as long as I'm walking in the right direction, I'm going to end up at the right place. And I feel like you kind of pretty much said that, like you almost said that like so perfectly throughout the session that I just kept on thinking like, wow, she just <laughs> seems to really already know her personality type. Like this is kind of crazy. Um, you also said that, uh, you uh it's hard for you to keep back your emotions at times mm -hmm. um, and you said that it's not that you're not aware of other people's emotions but you're way more like, tapped into your own emotions which is yeah. what the feeling is about 
And your superpower from there is like from being super tapped into your own emotions and your own emotional territory, that's when you're able to now look at other people and help them guide them through their emotional territory, which probably helps so much when it comes to coaching other people like, hey, find this within yourself. And mm -hmm. then you start like guiding them through their own like emotional space and you help them to express, which is another thing that extrovert, I mean, extroverted sensing and introverted feeling combined together is always going to like, like want to do. But introverted feelings, uh, polarity side is extroverted thinking. And for most ESFPs, what can happen is they get into what we call a loop. This is where the ESFP pretty much starts to uh, have their SE, the extroverted sensing and the extroverted thinking work so much together that they're kind of skipping over introverted feeling. This is when ESFPs become really big go-getters and it's not bad to be a go-getter. Mm -hmm. However, if you're being a go-getter but you're not consulting with your FI, like, is this what really lights me up? And am I going about this in an ethical way? Am I being um, kind to others while I'm doing this? Or am I just kind of like bulldozing them over and stuff like that? Then that's when like it can become like a little bit of like a, an issue. Like, oh, I'm just using people to get to where I need to versus like that FI is like, hey, maybe we should continue to also consider their feelings or like, hey, are you taking care of yourself? Oh, you have the same issue that I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you taking care of yourself? You know, like, have you eaten today? Have you like yeah. you know, meditated in this way? Boom, boom. So that's where the introverted feeling can really come in. But clearly that extroverted thinking, even though like it's operating at like personality actor says, kind of with the certainty of a 10 year old, it's still doing something because extroverted thinking is all about getting things done. Mm -hmm. It's all about finding out how can we make this happen? It's all about like almost like executing a plan. Like, okay, let's let's jump into this. Let's follow the steps. Let's follow the procedures. Introverted feeling is like, mm, this is what I want. And extroverted thinking is like, all right, how are we going to get it? But if your introverted feeling doesn't know what it wants, then extroverted thinking is just going to go wherever extroverted sensing goes. And it's like, you weren't even sure that this is what you wanted, but now you got it. And right. you probably like stepped on a lot of toes in order to get there. But then when you have all of them working together, now your extroverted sensing gets you to hop into action, but you're slowing down enough to make sure like, wait, let me check in with my heart. Is this right? Does this feel right? Is this authentic to who I am? Am I going to be able to express all of that? And now that I've checked in with my heart, okay, now I know that this is what I want. Extroverted thinking comes in and it's like, this is the plan on how to get there, or this is the steps that we should follow. And then introverted intuition, that's where it starts to be like a kind of backseat guide. And so it's like helping you to like map out like that territory that you have like a few steps at a time. And that's also why like as your three-year-old or as your inferior function, you're not someone who's gonna think super, super deeply about a lot of things. This is why like if, and it's not to say that ESFPs never think about such things, but it's very common for ESFPs to stay more in their extroverted sensing like, hey, if we can't prove this, if it's not verifiable or reliable, why are we spending time talking about souls? Why are we spending time <laughs> talking about these abstract theories? And let, let's let's spend more time just doing stuff that like we can actually like 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 it's actually visceral, that's actually exciting, that's actually real and tangible. Um, mm -hmm. Your introvert intuition function as an inferior, like so, someone who has it like as a dominant function, so like someone like Joyce maybe could spend hours on end just discussing like what might happen after our lives are you know after we like die here and oh well what are all the different theories about that and let's explore in this way and you know you like you said it's like it's not that it's like not necessarily fun but like i don't really want to spend all of my time doing that and then joyce right. might be like yeah it's not that dancing is not fun <laughs> but i don't really want to spend much time doing that oh it's not that working out is not really fun but well, Joyce, you know, are, have you still been doing your workouts every day, Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, and I bring that up because Joyce has extroverted sensing as an inferior function. So that's kind of like a way to show like the difference. So mm -hmm. someone like Joyce is like planning all of the, the steps before she takes a step because in her mind, it's like, I can't improvise 
as quickly on a dime. So I have to plan it out as much as possible. So mm -hmm. there's very small room for when I'd have to improvise, whereas you'd be like the opposite. It's like, man, I don't think I'm really that great with like planning so hard like that, but I'm great yeah. at improvising. So maybe, so I'm not going to try to like plan that hard. I'm just going to make sure that I just go to my auxiliary function and make sure I'm doing the right thing. And as long as I'm doing the right thing, then all right, cool. And I, I will, I'll be able to get to the right place, like in some way, shape or form. Um, let's see. I feel like I probably wove everything in here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have here. Does that resonate with you so far? Yeah, I think I definitely understand that. Um, and I think that, I, I mean, I have gotten ESFP as a result before. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the only thing that I was just like, oh, I don't know, was maybe just more based on like stereotypes and like mm -hmm. actual, um, you know, the cognitive functions. I also think I didn't necessarily understand like the difference between um, say like NI mm -hmm. um, and then something like TI. Mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah and so that was probably um kind of what confused me there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um but mm -hmm. i think that it makes sense now kind of like spelled out like that yeah 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 and i have both ni and ti in my stack mm -hmm. so it took me actually years to realize like oh that was my ti i thought that was yeah. my ni all along oh that was my ni i thought that was my ti so i get it i get it um, but yeah for well i mean i guess that would be like a whole other thing to like really detail the differences between it but that's one thing with ti ti is all about slicing the like being pedantic and like being like actually the difference between this and this is whatever so it's, oh the right. difference between ni and ti is boom boom, boom. the difference between a soul animal and a, a, a power animal and a, a, a animal guide is this and you know just stuff like that but yeah, I'm glad that that makes sense so far. And Joyce, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, I think that was perfectly stated. Um, yeah, I, I feel like Denzel covered all the territory that I was going to mention. And yeah, I, I find with ESFP stereotypes, they don't do it justice. And I think it's because there are not a lot of ESFPs in the community informing the memes. It's just people guessing about how ESFPs are like and then making memes off of that. And and so it's kind of like people trying to describe Bigfoot without ever meeting Bigfoot. And then mm -hmm. they com completely mischaracterize what kind of animal or yeah. mythical being they are. So um what parts yeah. of the esfp did you find that are stereotypical that you didn't like agree with like was it like the twerking on the table kind of esfp they're like yeah no that's not me or like essentially the oh. yeah because i think that as like adulthood has come like i've become a little much more like kind of reeled in and tame mm -hmm. just because that's how life is yeah um and so i think that kind of held me back a little bit but then cool. you know in the same kind of breath i would be like well i was definitely like that as a kid right like right, right. yeah people. Mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah. i think yeah i think that's really kind of what was confusing to me and then i um you know, I think I also just didn't fully understand what SE was. Um, like, I, I kind of did, but mm -hmm. then um, I was like, I don't know if that's like, I don't, I don't know where that would be, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So as we grow older, we tend to develop our non-preferred functions more. It's called individuation, as Carl Jung puts it. And so I find that an, an ESFP over time might become more reserved or like slow down or learn to contemplate before acting whereas their natural impulse might have been to jump right in and so yeah it, it, it makes sense because uh stereotypes only capture maybe the teenage version of a type when mm -hmm. they haven't had the chance to grow up yet so. yeah yeah but yeah i think that uh yeah, I, I know a lot of ESFPs who they had that side to them, like playful in that type of way or whatever like that, but also very like boss, like 
because mm, that tertiary, tertiary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it it wants to be seen as like like how you said that when you uh, came into the job you were younger so you like wanted to be taken more seriously so it's like that tertiary te like steps up and it's like hey like I want to make sure that I'm t- being taken seriously so I'm going to dress in a certain way I'm, I'm I'm and I'm passionate about my craft and then usually like you know those types of like wild ESFPs in that sense they don't really have an outlet. So that's why it's like, yeah, you know, I'm like twerking or I'm doing this. I'm getting drunk. I'm like partying, whatever. But for someone like you, who from a very young age, like you already were like acting all the time and like you had this outlet, then your SC and your FI already had something to express through and it continues to express through. And now you're helping other people to express. And so you're bringing that out, which is also even feeding your NI because now it's like, oh, I'm building the future for other people in some type of way. And so you don't feel the need to use those functions in a sensory indulgent type of fashion, but you're using it in a lot more of a mature fashion, which is, I think you're doing an amazing job. Uh, Thank you. Again, not that 25 is like super, super young, but for 25 and doing what you're doing, you definitely should know like that's that's huge props. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 A, a actually, serious- Oh, go ahead. Yeah, a serious top uh, achiever. And and so actually with the S-E-T-E, what can happen is a really great ability to read the room and to manage your image. So you mentioned your ability to also, like Denzel said, dress dress in a certain way that leaves a certain impression. So that's also a part of developing the tertiary function. So Denzel, you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it, it was funny because uh, at the very beginning, when we asked you like, oh, so like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and everything like that? And then you said that you were an acting coach and all of that. Then in my head, I immediately was like, that's so dope because my wife and I, uh, we are really like rigorously like pursuing uh, like acting. Oh, and so cool. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I was like, I, I swear to you, literally, like in my head, I was like, okay, but what are the odds that she lives in Atlanta? And then you said <laughs> she mm-hmm. lives in Atlanta. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to make mention of that at the end of the session. Now, of course, if you decide to decline, then that is also okay. But I was just going to at least shoot my shot and, yeah, like maybe like get the email information, and everything. It's like, oh. you know. You yeah. could probably become our acting coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, of course. I can give you any kind of information. And if not me, I work with two other fantastic acting coaches who do really great work. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Um, I guess Joyce could probably like send me uh yeah, and then I'll like email you. Um and I'll tell my wife about you. Um Absolutely. And if you want at some point with your busy schedule um maybe at some point then we can also like meet up to just hang out like go eat your husband oh, absolutely husband, sure yeah my uh wife is actually an isfp and oh. so you and her might have like a lot in common and usually she meets well i wouldn't say all the time but we've we've met like esfps that are not really as they're, they they can be a little bit more of a stereotype, and she doesn't mm-hmm. mind that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think that for her, she, she's a incre- in my opinion, she's an incredibly mature ISFP, and so I think that she would appreciate like the type oh. of energy that you presented throughout this session and everything. Like my, I'm an ENFJ. I don't know if I mentioned that. So mm-hmm. I'm always thinking like, oh, how these two people get along and stuff. Yeah. Like that. I think that you two would actually like get along really well. Great. That's awesome. Heck yeah. yeah. And I actually think this is a great example of a typing session. And so, Camilla, I'm wondering, um, would you ever be open to having this on the internet or are you a very private person and you're like, no? No, you can absolutely post it. I'm not, um, I'm not super private. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, absolutely. I think that that, um, yeah, I'm open to that for sure. Awesome. So Denzel actually has a YouTube channel of his own, and he loves to post typing sessions there all the time. And so if you have your favorite headshot of a portrait of you from here to here. I'm sure you have a headshot. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. we'll use it for the thumbnail. And so we'll Great. send you a copy of the video once it's out too. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And feel right. free to send your details. So I'll forward it to Denzel later too. So. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're absolutely welcome. And the very last, well, actually, no, I don't know. I mean, it's worth an invitation. I have a group chat on an app called Telegram, and it's for my YouTube subscribers. And they usually, like, they talk about everything and anything under the sun. We have one other ESFP in there, and then we have, like, a few ESTPs, stuff like that. Um, now, you don't have to speak in there all the time. Joyce is in there. She mm -hmm. usually speaks when she's summoned. It's, like, maybe, like, 35 people and everything. But... Yeah, like I said, like they speak a lot about typology. So like if this is something that you're like actually like interested in mm -hmm. or if it was just something that's like, oh, I just wanted to know my type and then leave it at that. That's also totally fine. But if you wanted to like join a community where mm -hmm. they're talking about anything and everything and you can make connections in that way, then uh, I can invite you to that. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll open to that. Yeah. I'll awesome. give you a heads up to it. They talk about a lot of abstract topics. Like <laughs> have a, that's what I was like, school. you know, so if you don't want to, then yeah. <laughs> that's all right. I am part of a couple of different like um, group chats kind of like that for, for different topics. Um, I just chime in occasionally, but yeah, we have different branches though. We have painter's palace. Joyce isn't in that one, I think, but like we set like, there's like, painter's palace where like you share like art and then there's poetry palace where you share like poetry then we have the polemic where people talk about like taboo and controversial topics and stuff like that um and then there's just ponder palace which is just everyone talks about anything and everything so yeah but like i said you it's not something that if, if you don't speak in there for like weeks at a time I'm not just gonna kick you out. So okay. <laughs> yeah, you can leave it if you want. If you're like, oh yeah, I'm not feeling this. I think I do want to leave. Then I will not hate you. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Send me the information. I I definitely join. Cool. This all right. With all that said, do you have any last questions, comments, concerns? No, I don't think so. Um, I this was uh, really enjoyable. I think I understand the type. Um, more now um, and kind of how I fit into that type. Um, so, so thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, no, this was a great experience. Awesome. Ooh, yeah. I'm glad that we were able to do that for you. Here to help. And I'll also send you follow-up information on the ESFP personality type and we'll see you in the type space. All yeah. right. I'll see you around, Camilla. Bye. Thank you so much. It was nice to meet you both. Take care. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. And if you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe. It actually really helps out my channel a lot so that more people who actually care about what I want to say can actually find me a lot more easier. Also, if you did enjoy it, then maybe you'll enjoy a lot of my other content as well. So be sure to check out some of my playlists where you'll be able to find a lot of my older videos and older content. And last but not least, if you would like any profiling sessions or coaching sessions, be sure to check out denzelmensa.com where you'll be able to book me and you'll see the rest of my services. But thanks again and have a great day.